Hello, thanks for joining us. Welcome to FECAM's UNTH Histology Slide Series. I am Akela Busayo, a 600 level student of Department of Medicine and Surgery, College of Medicine, University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital, Enugu. I will be taking us through the slides of epithelia. This video is brought to you by the Academic Board of FECAM's Federation of Catholic Medical and Dental Students, UNT chapter. The epithelia we will be discussing will be, be the common ones that we are going to be working with throughout the course of this series. Let's get started. So this is the simple squamous epithelium, also known as the pavement epithelium. What is an what defines an epithelium? An epithelium is actually defined by the presence of a basement membrane which separates the epithelial layer from the connective tissues below it. Now here we have this pavement epithelium which is characterized by the presence of a single cell layer. This cell these cells can be identified by the present that identified by the presence of a nucleus which appears to bulge out of the cytoplasm. So we have the nucleus here and then the cytoplasm and these cells are joined together by intercellular additions. Now this the nucleus appears to be stained darker than the cytoplasm because of the fact that the nucleus takes up the aerosin stain while the cytoplasm takes up the hematoxylin stain when the cell when the slide is stained by the H and E. Now as you can see here, this is the this is the like the, the basement membrane is just under here and then we have the single cell tick layer. So we have this 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 one cell, this another cell, this another cell. So this most of the structures, most of the structures that are going to see simple squamous epithelium are going to appear like this one single cell layer tick, and then we are going to be able to identify the bulge of the nucleus and then the flattened cytoplasm. Now, where can this epithelium be formed? The pavement epithelium is mainly found um, in mesothelium, that means membranes that form the lining of several body cavities, such as the pleura, the peritoneum, the mediastinum, the pericardium, and even the perimetrium. This is another slide of the simple squamous epithelium, that means the pavement epithelium. Now, let's, def let's check what we can see our basement membrane. Now, this is the basement membrane, like separating this single cell layer thick epithelium from the underlying connective tissue. Now, we can see the arrow points to the nucleus of one of the cells of the epithelium. So, this is the nucleus which stained dark, I mean the aerosin still, and then the cytoplasm. So we can see that it's line, it's like lining, it is like a mesothelia that is lining. So it's lining a, a, a mesothelia, something like probably a pleura um, or even a peritoneum. This is a slide of the transitional epithelium, also known as the uroepithelium. The transitional epithelium is actually made up of four to five cell thick. I mean, four to five cell layer is a four to five cell layer, and then these cells have their peculiar characteristics that differentiate them from other epithelium. At first, we identify our basement membrane that separates the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue. Now, I'm going to try to illustrate the characteristics of this epithelium with a little sketch. Now, we are going to have our cell we said it's about four layers four cell layer thick so let's make a little sketch our nucleus now one thing about the uppermost cell of this epithelium is that it's it is dome shape I mean, dome shape or umbrella shaped that's why it is even called the dome or umbrella cells now the upper part of this cell the upper half 
is actually it takes up things much more deeper than the rest of the cells so we have something like this and then the rest of the cell just appears almost pale and even transparent so taking this thing this diagram into our structure taking this diagram into our structure we are able to see that we have a layer of i mean uniform thickness i mean it is it is darker like it's ten deeper than the rest of the layers than the rest of the cell layers here so this this part of this um diagram represents this part so you can see that it looks if you if you look very closely we will see that it has a characteristic dome 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 shape does it characteristic dome shape and then the rest of the cells here like as you can see here looks transparent so this is very much characteristic of a transitional epithelium now where can this epithelium be found it's mainly car is mainly found in the urinary bladder and then the ureter and this epithelium is even a very very major feature feature for identifying these structures we are going to look into them in details when we go to your genital system the next epithelium we are going to talk about is the stratified squamous epithelium now the stratified squamous epithelium can be of two types we have the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium which we are going to be talking about on this slide and then we have the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium which we are going to talk about later now the word stratified means that the cell layers are in structure that means horizontal layers of cells the epithelium is actually several cell thick as you can see here and then as you can see the horizontal layers of cells and what characterizes this epithelium is actually the gradual reduction in the size of the cell layer as we go from below upward. Just as you can see here, the cells flatten from below upward. Like here, you can see that the cells here is a bit bigger than the ones that we can see here. And as we go up, we can see that the ones, the one here, is even bigger, and then this one is is more flattened than the one we can have here. So the flat thing continues in such a way that the uppermost cell, I mean the uppermost layer have cells that looks like that of the simple squamous epithelium. That's where the name squamous, the word squamous comes into the name of this particular epithelium. This also shows the slide of the non keratinized squamous epithelium. And then as you can see, at first, we said we are going to identify our basement membrane so that we are able to know maybe it is an epithelium or not. Now we can see, just, there is there's like a boundary that separates this layer of cells from the underlying site, uh, the underlying connective tissue. So as you can see here, so it's we may not really be able to pinpoint that this is a basement membrane but we're going to just see the boundary that separates the epithelium from the connective tissue now as you can as we see you can see that as we go up there is a continuous thinning in such a way that the uppermost cell here looks just as thin as one very tiny cell layer as you can see here, even though we may not be able to appreciate the bulge that you can see in the normal simple squamous epithelium, but we can see that it is very much flattened than the cells that we can see in the in the basal layer. This is also another slide that is showing the non characterized squamous epithelium, but this time it is in a log magnification, so we can't really appreciate the how big or small the cells are but one thing we should notice is that when we have the simple squamous epithelium and a low magnification it has like a homogeneous stain unlike what we see in um, the transitional epithelium that we have um, a very thick upper layer this one is just homogeneously stained 
and then at first you can identify um, the boundary between the epithelial layer and then the connective tissue so this is the this is the i can see that it is i mean several cell thick with what we can see here now where can this um type of epithelium be found um this type of epithelium are mainly found on exposed area that um, areas that are actually exposed to a lot of stress such as the oesophagus the oral mucosal and then the mucosal of the vagina this slide is also showing the slide of the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium but this time it in a much more lower magnification so one of the things you are going to put in mind is anytime you have a slide with a thick epithelium homogeneously stained closer to the lumen the first thing you should think about is actually a stratified squamous epithelium before checking other features this is the slide of the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium now the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium may or may possess cilia but in this case and in many other cases it actually possess cilia so the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium appears to be many cell thick but from the word pseudo which means false it means that this is not really many cell thick but just one cell layer with all the cells touching the basement membrane but not all the cells are reaching the lumen let me give an illustration this is our basement membrane then this is our lumen so we give we draw quickly four cells okay so these are four cells two touching the basement the lumen two reaching the lumen but all are touching the basement membrane so this is just typical of what we can see in the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium you can see these two are reaching the lumen but these two are not reaching but it, all the four are actually touching the basement membrane so it now looks like okay this is a layer this is a layer but in reality it is just one layer of cell this is also another slide of the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium as you can see the basement membrane and then the lumen now where can this epithelium be found it's found mainly in the respiratory tract but can also be found in the male reproductive tract as we go further we are going to give in details this particular area so we can find the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium the last epithelium we are going to be describing today is actually the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium which is found mainly in the skin now at first we will trace out our basement membrane to be able to know that we are dealing with epithelium now the ep the basement membrane appears to be in this layer so we have our connective tissue this time known as the dermis and then we have the epithelium this time is known as the epidermis so we can see that as we go up the epithelium tends the cells here tends to thin out even though we may not be it may not be very clear but we can see that we can see the nucleus distinctly here the nuclei distinctly here but we can't see it as we go upward so there is actually there seems to be another homogeneously thin layer that is different from the epidem epide epithelial layer so this layer is actually called the keratin layer and it is a layer of dead cells that play protective role being resistant to water and then um, to some other chair forces so that is one of the distinct things that makes the skin different from other cell layer from other epithelium the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is mainly seen in the skin as i said earlier and then it can also be found in the art palette now this particular slide is a slide of the glabrous skin glabrous in the sense that it has no air follicle as you can see that we can't really pinpoint any air follicle here what we can just see here something like sweat pores like what we can see here and then this thick keratin layer that we are seeing is actually mainly it's 
it's not as thick as this in other parts of the skin. So, like by glabrous skin, we mean that these are skins that are mainly found on the palm and the soles. Now, this is a slide of just a typical skin. Now, in this, we can trace out, even though not very clear, we can see that there is a boundary here tracing out our dermis from our epidermis. Then you can see that immediately after the epidermis, there is another homogeneously thin layer, which represents our keratin layer. Now, there is another feature of the skin that is very much clear. You can see that there is what we call the air follicle with the air shafts and then the air bulb, the, the bulb, then the air shaft, then the follicle. Then we can even see the sebaceous gland, which ox, we, can, we can even say that this is a pillow sebaceous unit, even though the, the areter muscle, I think this is the areter muscle. So we can see that this gives, this is much more a giveaway for the skin, for the slide of the skin. If you can see the air follicle, you can say, okay, now this is like if so even though we cannot be able to map out this distinct um epithelium we cannot that okay the presence of this air follicle gives us the skin so if you are asked about the reason for education of the skin you can say that presence of keratinized layer you can also say presence of air follicle even if you asked more we can even tell them presence of air shaft so um, we have come to the end of today's episode. I hope we were able to learn something and identify some slides. We will continue with connective tissues in the next episode. But if you have any comments, any questions concerning epithelium or epithelial layers that you want us to talk about, just leave your comments below. Um, and it, if this video actually give a little help, you can press the like button. If it really helped and then you want to be notified when the next episode is released, you can also click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.